Hi, I'm going to show you how to work with isolated or reproducible environments using VEnv and VirtualEnv. This will work both on UpMax and HPC 2N. I'll be showing it on the Rackham computer cluster, Kepmekaise. In the bigger documentation you'll find a bit, things have changed, but it's not much. Um, VEnv and VirtualEnv, I will use them as synonyms and because VEnv is shorter I will use VEnv. So let's start from a bigger picture. We know Python, we want to use Python, and Python has packages. That's code written by others. We want to use those packages, because then you need to write less code, so you should use all the packages. It saves you a lot of time. Packages, however, they have versions. And sometimes you need the different versions of a package, maybe even at the same time. And um, to manage those different sets of versions of packages. There's, there are version managers. One of them is Conda, which allows you uh, to do that. I will virtual env and vnv are, are, are another one which I'll be talking about here. And with vn and virtual env, you create isolated or reproducible environments of certain combinations of package versions. So you can create an environment A which has package which has version 1 of package A and version 2 of package B whereas another one environment has something else or maybe even a different python version um, so VN works both on upmax and HPC 2n um, you can do this by hand I'll show first show you how to create one uh, how to install packages by hand but then I'll show you how to uh, extract the packages from your VN and then install the package from another VN so you can really share your virtual environment with other people. Uh, that's definitely and that's a reproducible environment I would say. First step, how would you create one? Well we're gonna load the module for Python, you should always have done that. And then we're gonna type in this long big line. Uh, this is one line, so this is two lines of code. So there's an enter here the end of this uh, module load Python line and then there's an enter at the end and because that doesn't fit nice on the screen you'll see me moving the, the, the terminal around a bit um, I go to the terminal now so here we see it um, you see my name is uh, Richard that's my username and I am Rackham2 and I'm in no environment yet you'll see that this prompt as it will call my prompt will change when I activate the virtual environment but first I'm going to create one so I'm going to do module load python and I'll take a look which python version 3.10.8 You see I move the, the window around a bit so I can see what I should type It's a bit clumsy but uh, well, that's what it is So now I have my python environment load, you always load the python environment if you, if you type python you should see a proper high version and a not 2.6.5 or something which is the standard version uh, that won't bad idea Low, always load a Python module. Alright, now we're going to create a Python virtual environment called example and the name is mostly given by the last part um, because that's what I'll be doing. Python, create an environment, um, use the packages that are already locally on site and this is just where you put it. So this can be any folder um, but it's a good idea to put it in a folder with a lot of space. So the project folder is the recommended place to put it. Well, this is one line and I'll be uh, typing it in, a, in uh, here. So it will be a bit clumsy too. Dash mvn dash 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 system site packages system side packages, you see I, I just move it around to, to get the, the C and the K visible for me space slash proy slash nice 2023 22914 slash then it's my username so it says says user between angle brackets uh, well I'm Richel um, this is my username so this is where I'm gonna put it uh, Python slash example so here I create a virtual environment um, for uh, just create a fresh a new one so this may take some time because it needs to create a virtual environment it uses the Python version I have now 
all right that this is great this is all i can show you i can of course show you that this file not folder now exists but i'll skip this because we will be activating it in the next step so now we have this virtual environment and it's time to activate it that's one line um, the line has two parts source you have to call really call that and then the name of where you have put it so proy nice richel python example it's the name of your virtual environment slash bin slash activate that's that's how you activate the environment and you'll see my prompt will change so i'm going to go back to rackham and i'll make it a bit wider because i can now reuse this this long thing like where i put my vnv I'm gonna that, that I will reuse that one. So I'm just gonna remove all the, the parts, the, the, the parts at the start, source, and then example slash what was the rest slash bin slash activate activate. Let's take a look. Source project where I put it example slash bin slash activate. I'm activating it. Done. You can see in my prompt that there's now the word example between round braces. This indicates that I have a virtual environment activated and the name of the virtual environment is called example. What we can do in this virtual environment is uh, whatever we like to do and it will be stored in that virtual environment. So let's do pip list to see what has already been installed. Then I will install something and then I'll um, yeah, then, then I'll see if, if it actually worked. So NumPy, let's see. So we have a version of NumPy. Um, let's take a look. So now we have version 1.23.4 installed. And in this version, uh, virtual environment, for example, I want to use an older version. I want to use 15.4. So we can do that. So in this virtual environment called example, I'm going to install NumPy. Uh, and that old that older version pip install numpy is 1.15.4 you see i switch windows a bit but uh, hope here i got the install and now in the virtual environment example it will install that version of numpy all my other python versions are just the same because it's an isolated environment that's so cool about this um, so this specific version, this specific virtual environment, now will have this old version of NumPy. And the next time when we open up this virtual environment, we'll get the old NumPy back too. So the installation takes some time. Um, I'm just going to show you what I'll be doing after this. So, all right. Well, so there's, there's something going wrong. I'm going to ignore this for now because it's not a part of the useful video um, so so it can't do it because of some good reason um, if I do pip list pip list I will still see, see numpy numpy in the old ver the new version so I'm gonna leave it at that but this is how you could have installed an older version of numpy wouldn't there be a problem when you have installed when you're done using your VM, you can you write deactivate and it's gone. So I'll do that. Deactivate an example is gone. So now I'm out of my virtual environment. So one exercise would be to create a VM called VP VPI Env. Activate it. Install the packages Spacey and Newborn. Confirm these are installed. Deactivate the, the, the VM. So I'm going to do that too. And uh, luckily I have the old uh, prompt still there. So vpy vnv vpy vpynv. So here I create vpynv. Next step is activate it. That will be easy because um, it will create a script that I just need to source. Don't forget you do the source here source the script in bin slash activate so now i'm in that environment pip install spacey oh, oh, oh. 
spacey I'm sure and pip install seaborn let's do that that's still uh, installing oh, sure 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 so you can see that it also installs all the dependencies and there's some nice nice pretty colors there all right so we got that i'm gonna install seaborn pip install seaborn let's do, use double l there so if install this we do pip list to see if that's worked i'm gonna look for the words seaborn and spacey they should be there here we see spacey and here we see seaborn uh, so we convert this insult, we, we deactivate our VN for now, oh, deactivate at now, um, the virtual environment is gone, when I see, take a look now at my standard installed package list, you will won't see them, you see no spacey, you see no seaborn, because I haven't installed them in my standard uh, environment, it's called the base environment. Right, so here we did the exercise. Now, let's go back to the first picture. Now imagine that, that, that you have your virtual environment, you've installed packages and you got it to work all nicely without errors like I just had. You can imagine you want to reproduce that environment. You want to share with all the people that which version just versions of the packages you've used. For that, you use a file called requirements. This is a social convention. I'll show you how to create it from your VNV and then how to install packages from that file. So going back to how to make it, that's basically just pip freeze greater than sign requirements. So pip freeze will give you all the requirements you're using now. Pip freeze bigger than requirements text and now pip like I've I have just showed this is the list of the packages I now have I used pip list and what pip freeze does more or less is save pip list to a file and now I can do pip install dash r install dash r so you can uh, this is a very standard way, pip install dash r requirements.txt and it will install those packages that are in the requirements file. Um, and because I didn't change any environment, like I could change environments and the packages uh, the packages will change that I have installed, but I didn't. I, I installed the packages I've just had, so I won't do it. If you want to take a look at how the requirement file looks like, look with cat you can view a file. So view the file called requirements. It really looks looks like this. It's just a pip list. It's very, very simple. It just shows me all the package versions I've had. So let's uh, do exercise two now, in which we create a virtual environment called vpyenv, activate it create a file like that, install these requirements, confirm the are installed, deactivate the VM. So let's do it. So I think I've already created that VP, VPI and uh, this is the command how you do it. If I do it again, I will get an error because it's already existing. Uh, yeah, so that, that's, that's well spotted, but this is how you, would you not have created it, run this command to create a VPI and um, we're going to activate the thing. Now let's do that. So we need to source a file in vpyenv in the folder bin slash activate. And now at the left we can see in our prompt that vpyenv has been activated. Now we need to create a file with, with this thing, with this stuff in it. We can do this in multiple ways. Um, one of them is uh, let's let's use for example nano nano requirements text and then um, this is opens up a text editor well the problem with this is that we just created that file so I'm not going to delete all the text and there's maybe there's probably a smart way to do this 
Um, so I want to create a file called requirements with numpy is that so this is too much work so I'm gonna s I'm gonna remove it remove the file requirements and start from scratch again now I need to type numpy equals 1.22.3 matplotlib equals equals 3.5.2 and I need to write pandas equals equals 1.4.2 so now I've created my own requirements file um, and you can use different editors like I did uh, but if I now view the file so with cat you view the file we see that it looks exactly as we would expect so we need to install these packages so that's pip install dash r requirements.txt and now pip will do an installation of the requirements file that I've just created um, and it will do this in this virtual environment after that we have to confirm that these are installed so this can take some time we'll do use pip list on that and then we deactivate the virtual environment using deactivate so of course this installation can take some time so there's some pretty output here and let's take a look so it started with numpy so so it downloaded first um, the packages that I wanted and now it's looking to resolve um, which dependencies I needed well it could not resolve this um, I'm not I'm gonna so I'm not gonna resolve this myself this is how you would have done it I'm not going to go into debugging how I would have checked is using pip list then we can just see all the version and their uh, all the packages in their version and then we're gonna deactivate the VN deactivate and now I'm back in my base environment here I've showed you how to work with isolated environments using VN and virtual length using using an HPC cluster like Upmax or HPC 2N I used Rackham for demonstration Kepnakais is quite similar uh, to do that um, I've been using a requirements file too you've seen that I've gotten into um, a package conflict uh, twice um, you'll come to that I won't discuss how to debug it um, just pick different versions well try different versions or contact us how to resolve that all right, that was it, and I wish you very good luck in doing the exercises yourself. Bye.